we are um, here for this uh, workshop, which is um, comes in two pieces. Uh, uh, two days of scientific talks, which we're going to hold here in the forum, and then a couple of days uh, where we're, people are going to get to work thinking about uh, how to put their data into the database, how to improve the database, and things like that. So this is um, officially a magic workshop, but it has a, the science theme of Earth's magnetic field from the beginning. Um, I want to start out with a big thank you to the people who've put in all the work for this uh, meeting. Um, front and center is Nick Jarbo, who many of you have heard from, who has uh, basically structured everything, organized everything, made the program, and got us all here. Um, on the sides, you'll see uh, the people who actually do the work of making the magic database, um, or the prime movers, I should say. There are a bunch of other people who've been helping and testing models and archiving data. Um, uh, Lisa Totes and Anthony Coppers. Um, I'm sorry to say that Anthony isn't able to be here today. He had actually to have some uh, emergency surgery last week, and he's just fine, but he's at home recovering from that. Um, and uh, so uh, you'll have to put up with some of the rest of us presenting what he would have done, um, but we'll do our best to uh, represent, the, uh, represent him in that. Um, Rupert Minette is the programmer who basically uh, structures everything that makes magic work. And um, I hope you'll take the opportunity to talk with him and uh, discuss how things work as we go along the way. Um, and Nick Swanson Heisel is, we want to give credit for um, uh, the uh, idea of having a uh, hackathon on Friday, which is going to be part of the uh, activities later in this week. So uh, a little bit about logistics and social events. Uh, for those of you who haven't yet discovered them, the uh, restrooms, uh, you go down this hallway here or you exit at the rear and they're there on the left side of the auditorium facing to the back. Um, posters, uh, everybody seems to have found a place, I think. If you haven't, uh, they're going to be displayed in the foyer here until 3 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, breakfast and lunch will be supplied here today and tomorrow. And um, uh, there will be a reception and poster session here at the end of the talks today at around 5 p.m. Uh, going till whenever. Uh, tomorrow, um, I will be hosting a dinner at my house. Um, if, you, uh, if you think you'd like to come, uh, please try to RSVP to me. We work by the end of today, so we have some idea of numbers. Um, if you don't RSVP, uh, still feel free to come anyway, but it would be helpful for us to know whether we've got uh, 20 or 40 people. <laughs> Um, on Thursday, the tutorial and Friday, the hackathon will be in a different <coughs> building. There's a smaller group and we'll be uh, working uh, in, uh, with the idea of working with computers and uh, actually putting data into the database, figuring out how to uh, modify the database. And that will actually be held in the Eckhart building, which is the building with the slanty roof, which is about 100 yards up the hill. Um, and there will be lunch supplied then. So. Um, we have a uh, rather uh, nice speaker schedule. I don't expect you to read this. If you want to read it, find it in your program book in front of you. Um, there are, in the, in the talks that you will hear today, we are focusing on um, a scientific theme. This is a magic workshop, which means it's uh, primarily organized by the uh, people who have developed and uh, the, the magic database. But, um, our goal in developing this database was not simply to have an archive or a storage for hiding numbers in, um, but really to have something that people could use actively for doing research. And um, so when we originally wrote our proposal, as NSF um, uh, so politely told us at the time, they said, you can't just build a database, you have to explain what it's going to be useful for, and there has to be some science behind it. So at the time, we laid out a series of um, scientific themes that we thought we wanted were interesting and would be possible to work on. And um, then we had uh, we spent a lot of effort, energy and effort trying to develop the database. Um, at the last uh, database workshop we had, um, there was a move to say, we should work on one of these themes at the next workshop. And that's what you're seeing today. Uh, Today, we are talking about Earth's magnetic field from the beginning. So this is basically the application of geomagnetism, of paleomagnetism and rock magnetism to geomagnetic problems. So trying to think about what we can learn about the evolution of the Earth, when the magnetic field first started, 
and how paleomagnetic data play into understanding that problem. Um, you'll see that many of the talks are not actually focused on the very early Earth, but they do um, fit it within this context in the sense that they tell us what's possible from uh, the more modern times when we have a more complete record of what's going on with the magnetic field. Um, so uh, we're very excited with the uh, lineup of people that you see here. Um, there's a, we're hoping for a free interaction between um, people who work on this from the modeling and more theoretical aspects uh, to try and understand what it is that uh, paleomagnetists can bring to the table and what the theoreticians can bring to the table, the modelers, so that we can um, actually understand more about how the Earth's magnetic field is evolving. Um, tomorrow, we're going to hear more about the, the modern things, and um, you can see the details of that in your program book. Okay, so on Thursday and Friday, not everybody here is planning to stay around for this uh, this sort of data fest, but there will be, um, on Thursday, there will be a hands-on magic data upload workshop. Um, I want to assure you that it will be possible to not only upload the data, but also to retrieve them, so that this will not be a write-only database, but something where we can, where you can actually use the, the product. And um, this is going to be led by uh, Nick Jarbo, Lisa Tobes, and Rupert Minnett. And then on Friday, there will be um, an introduction to PMagPy, which is a piece of software that has been developed um, largely under uh, Lisa Tokes's um, enthusiastic lead. And uh, the idea then is to have a hackathon which will um, engage people in how the, this software could be improved, how people could contribute to it as a public domain piece of software. And um, part of the motivation behind this is that these, uh, this software is all to be open source and that the community should contribute to its development. OK, so um, I, why is the Earth's magnetic field important? We all know that it's the most important thing around from the scientific perspective, because otherwise you wouldn't be in the room here. But um, uh, this just emphasizes some of the things we're going to hear today. Um, the, primary thing I think that we are interested in, the, in is the idea of using it in here to, st to study Earth's history and evolution and thermal history. So this is our science focus today. Um, there are a number of goals for this meeting. Um, we want to uh, be able to highlight and discuss the important questions about Earth's magnetic field, its origin and significance. Um, as I said before, I think that when we deal with paleomagnetic data, we know we're dealing with a very incomplete record, and um, it can be uh, very exciting to look at what we think we can determine, but we do need the backup of some thoughtful interactions with theory, dynamo simulations, and collaborations across multiple fields for studying the Earth's deep interior to try and uh, firm some conclusions that we want based not just on data, but a sound theoretical backing. Um, I hope we'll hear a little bit um, from the interactions across these fields of what new data might be needed, what could be determined if we had some new data. Um, this is also a call to arms for careful archiving of paleomagnetic data before we lose all the details. I'm already uh, way past the age where I can remember what I did when I did my PhD. And uh, finding those data becomes increasingly difficult as we as, we, uh, as they age and we age, and um, it's great to be able to know that they can be found online. Um, and then I think we also want, I would want to hear some discussion of existing and future links to other database efforts. Okay, so I already said that on uh, Thursday and Friday, there will be this magic tutorial and hackathon. This is another thing that we hope to see. Uh, here you see on the right, uh, a map of some of our well, our contributed sites. There are 161 paleomagnetic sites archived in the database already. Um, we hope to add a few more on this on this at this workshop and uh, see that, um, that that we can make further progress in that area. Uh, so here are some outstanding questions about the magnetic field that came to mind when we were first uh, discussing having this workshop. And I, so I want to put them in front of you so that um, people are thinking about these them this week so that we can uh, be talking about them. Um, when did the field first form? 
I think uh, John's going to tell us a little bit about, Carduna's going to tell us a little bit about that in his keynote speech, which is coming next. Uh, is the presence of the field related to the existence of life on Earth? Um, how and when did the inner core form? And perhaps um, a, a hotly debated topic still is, did the inner core formation have a detectable impact on the paleomagnetic field record? Um, if it did, uh, what can we do to uh, uh, firm up the idea that we can detect that? Um, has the field always been dominantly dipolar mm -hmm. or has it actually existed in a different kind of state um, at, at an earlier part of Earth's history? Uh, have we always seen polarity reversals of the field throughout the uh, time that the field has existed? Um, is it possible to tell when the field is going to reverse or do we just have to wait till it's all done and then we can tell you, yes, it has reversed, which seems to be our current state. Um, and then uh, how can we use paleomagnetic results to improve dynamo simulations, the theory, uh, stochastic models and vice versa? How, you know, how, can, how can we build this two-way communication that will enable us to do a better job of um, the science that we're interested in. Um, and we'll hear a little bit, I think, about the limitations of the paleomagnetic record. And then um, lastly, I, you know, it would be great to hear what people think is needed to facilitate progress on the above questions. Um, so, uh, and uh, finally, so part of the, uh, as I said before, the goal of this meeting is to uh, do science with magic rather than just gathering data for the sake of having an archive and collection. Um, one of the things that uh, has been a key in forming this database is this idea that um, geopoetry poetry is essential. So we all need to have, you know, great creative ideas, um, but it needs to be grounded in experiments and data. And so, so that we can test whether these imaginative ideas are correct or not. And um, part of the goal with magic has been to make the data accessible so that uh, if I collect a data set or somebody else collects a data set, we can go and um, assess the data from the ground up, from the measurement state, uh, basically, to the, in, to the fully interpreted data, so that uh, we can resolve the questions of whether it's the modes of interpretation that lead us to disagree, or whether we disagree because the data disagree from different places or from different times. And uh, that's been our goal in, in building this database. Um, and the idea is that it can be used as a test of imaginative ideas. It's also been a goal that we not impose arbitrary standards about data quality in building the database, but that we try and build an archive where people using the data can, can assess the quality themselves because the data are well enough documented that you can decide whether, you know, whether they're acceptable for the particular use you have in mind. Um, and um, this is uh, something that I think is um, really important that we see in the community at large that there's a, an increasing uh, emphasis on the ability to reproduce results so that um, we can, so that people can assess whether we're moving forward scientifically or whether um, there's a, a not an adequate record for us to do that. Um, I think this is especially important in interdisciplinary science because uh, we need the record to be open for everybody to be able to come and try and interpret it for themselves. Uh, we need this interdisciplinary co collaboration and within it we need the capacity to understand and evaluate the quality of the observations uh, for the credibility of our own individual interpretations for data modeling and theory. So um, that's my introductory piece. Um, I wanted also to, um, I forgot to say when I was um, looking, offering thanks, that um, we are actually very fortunate to be able to run this meeting because NSF provided the funding. Um, we also received some supplementary funding from the IUGG as part of this workshop and uh, the scripts um, funded us to use this facility which we um, are lucky enough to be able to enjoy. Um, I am going to initially leave these side doors open so that people can come and go as they please. If it gets too noisy, which it probably will when they start to set up for lunch, we'll close these. Um, then you can exit through the back doors over there. 
Um, but in the meantime, um, I think we'll go forward with a very interesting meeting. Um, one last thing is that uh, we're pleased to have Robin Reichlin from NSF here today. I asked her if she wanted to say something and she said no. <laughs> but um, I think uh, we're very grateful. We want to thank NSF for the support that they're giving us in this meeting and I hope you'll take the opportunity to interact with her and I hope she's going to take the opportunity to pipe up and uh, tell us what she thinks too during the course of the meeting. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to move on to our first speaker and that would be uh, John Tarduno. And, um,